Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. We are back in the forest and I want to talk quickly about why empaths are constantly attracting narcissists into their lives. Is it happening to you? Because I've just received a message if I could talk about it, like what can we do on an energetic level to stop attracting narcissists? into our lives and the truth is that we can do a lot but we firstly need to get to the energetic understanding of how nature works so we can understand uh, why those things are happening because everything comes to balance if we look uh, into the nature from eastern philosophy we will find yin and yang everything needs to be balanced right darkness and the light quietness and the sound emptiness and space everything works in balance and everything needs to be balanced so things can function in nature on that um, material level and when it comes to empaths and narcissists when they come together they actually create a balance but for empaths it's an unpleasant sensation because most often they're being used for the unconscious benefit of narcissists. They're not doing that consciously. They're doing that as a result of their unconscious patterns. It's the only way they know how to function. So why balance happens when empaths or highly sensitive people and narcissists come together because empaths are overflowing with compassion usually people who are more spiritually open and are not fully grounded and don't have um, balanced energy and are not in power in true power of themselves they are overflowing with compassion because most of their energy is present here in their upper centers, in their upper bodies. So it comes from the top to the heart level. And this is beautiful energy, really beautiful energy because we are compassionate, we are kind, we are loving, we, we have that care and understanding for everything around us. But we can't fully set our boundaries. We don't have that strength to say no when we know and feel that we need to say no. And we don't feel the strength to truly stand up for ourselves. So we see there is already imbalance. And from the other side, narcissists have all most of their energy in the lower centers which means that they are more grounded, they are usually more disciplined, they are taking care of themselves, and they have compassion for themselves. They are practicing self-love, however it looks like, through working out, through maybe meditation, um, certain mindset practices. They are usually good in psychology and reading people, but not on that compassionate level. So they like to usually judge people, they like to compare themselves with others, and so on. So again there's imbalance because there's a great lack of compassion for others. And the reason for that is because they've been trained to be that, like that by their parents and parents of their parents and so on. So it's something we are kind of um, uh, sending <laughs> through generations and generations. Those are patterns we are um, receiving from our ancestors because they had no idea how to, how to balance themselves. And to be honest, right now we are living in the best possible times to learn more about it because there's more knowledge than ever present about this 
that's why we can do so much about it but it's usually unpleasant work because we need to step outside of the familiar outside of the known patterns and we need to start doing something new we need to adopt new behaviors new practices new rituals new mindset and we really need to step outside of the comfort zone so we can break the old patterns and design the new ones doesn't matter for nar narcissists for empaths for whoever those are actually just labels of of um, different ways of behaving for human beings and what can we do so if there's imbalance if empaths are over compassionate and narcissists <clears throat> are lacking that compassion for others then you need to recognize where are you in this process uh, what's your part here are you always there to somebody, for somebody else is it hard for you to say no is it for you hard to, to stand in your truth sometimes we just know what we need to do but we just don't do it because we kind of can't access into that internal power that we have the truth is you obviously can access because it's within you but you're not used to it so you're afraid that you will um, hurt feelings of that other person even though that other person has hurt your feelings uh, many times before you still don't want to do that because you have compassion for that person and that's why we need to learn to understand our emotions doesn't matter if it's a compassion if it's kindness if it's sadness if it's fear we need to understand the system of emotions once we understand that emotional system we'll understand when we are in power to to um, be like behind those emotions recognize them read them be aware of them but not be controlled by them so any kind of emotion compassion is a beautiful energy because compassion is connecting us but when we recognize that we're in the zone where somebody can use our compassion for their own benefit that's where we need to become aware and recognize oh no right now I don't have anything for you because I need to take care of myself right now I don't have anything to give you because I firstly need to take care of myself and often people would say that it's a selfish act because we don't want to help that person but if truly you feel that you don't have anything to give you firstly need to take care of yourself and it's just one thing but what we truly need to do is to take care of our energy system so if we are overflowing with compassion it's beautiful if you go outside and and find a horse or a cow or a dog or a cat that's beautiful but some people are not ready for that level of compassion yet and it's not your fault the world just is the way it is right now so it's not your fault that some people are not ready for that level of compassion yet but the truth is that also you are not ready for that level of compassion yet that's why your energy may be out of balance so you need to learn to ground all of your energy into your whole body not just the upper body love care compassion happiness joy it's all beautiful but we also need to build discipline in our lives we also need to learn to ground ourselves we also need to learn to stand in our truth we also need to become aware of our feminine and masculine energies we all have both of them within us so for example for me nurturing feminine energy is being creative expressing myself through art if you would observe my art you would see like I'm using a lot of colors I love colors that's how I'm expressing that creative feminine side of me 
every man has a feminine side within as well and the art can be expressed in both ways I'm expressing it that way because I love colors I love that gentle flow of mixing soft colors through stronger col colors and, and different pigments and, and so on I love that I love nature I love um, I love uh, gentleness I love uh, flow and that's to me an expression of feminine energy but then there's masculine energy when it comes for me to working out for example I'm coming from extreme sports so I was kind of used to it and when I got more deeper into spirituality and and different teachings I've noticed that most of those teachings are neglecting the other aspect of us when it comes to spirituality it's often everything about oneness about unity about consciousness but I've never heard when I was reading older books about spirituality how important it is also to take care of our individual self some would call it ego self but it's an individual point of consciousness right there you are an individual point of consciousness and as long as you are here as an individual with ability to freely express your individual self it means that you need to learn to balance that you need to learn to take care of that as well so often when people get into spirituality and spiritual awakening they forget about this side often even if people were disciplined they were working out they were taking care of themselves often after spiritual awakening many people stop taking care of that because they think it's all about unity it's all about flow spontaneously and it's again it's kind of natural because we are living in a world especially here in the west uh, where we are lacking so much of that creative expression and flow and spontaneously we are lacking that so when we go through that spiritual awakening we become aware of how beautiful it feels to be free to be open to be in that inner peace to be in that inner harmony so we kind of don't want to go back into forcing into lifting weights into going into the cold and whatever it is whatever works for you or, or whatever so but soon we we recognize that there are actually stages of awakening the first stage usually is that awareness okay it's really beautiful when you tap into the inner peace inner harmony but then you look around you and you see the world is kind of messed up and you start questioning is there a purpose that I'm not so messed up anymore than I was before and I'm still living in a world which is messed up is there a purpose to that and soon we realize that each of us is actually on a path of self-awakening so eventually that person can bring more of that awakened energy to the world and that's where we recognize well we need to get back from unity to individual consciousness so we can bring more of that uh, energy from unity into this world which is kind of lost and that's where we learn to balance energies that's where empaths recognize well even if I'm sensitive that's beautiful even if I'm emotional which is beautiful I need to learn to also be strong I need to learn to also stand in my truth I need to learn to run my business I need to learn to to organize my mind I need to learn to structure my life a little bit so I will have a plan what to do so I will know what I'm working on so I will follow my truth so I will do what's the most important to me 
and so on. So for every empath who's dealing with narcissists, it's because you're not nurturing enough your masculine energy, the energy of structure, the energy of strength, the energy of stability often, the energy of um, feeling grounded and overcoming discomfort, overcoming fears, overcoming unpleasant sensations in your body, like doing something you are afraid of. And once we actually start doing that, sometimes cold therapies can help you with that because you notice that it's really unpleasant to go into the cold water, but you go for a few times in and you recognize how amazing you feel when you come out. But most importantly, not just that you feel better, you suddenly feel in balance with yourself. You suddenly feel like you want to create something with that new energy. You become more productive. It's like your brain would turn on and suddenly you feel focused, you feel aware, you feel strong and you're ready to overcome something heavy, something hard. You're ready to say no to that person because you just feel that you need to do that. So, whatever can help you to balance your energy, that's what you need to do. So, for every empath or highly sensitive person, if you feel like you're constantly attracting narcissists into your life, see what are your weaknesses. See what you are missing in your life. Is there hard for you to set boundaries? What are boundaries? You know, we, we said, we, we actually decide what are uh, we valuing the most? What are our priorities? What is the most important to us? You know, if we just look at the core values of relationships, for example, relationship can only work when both participants work on themselves. That's when relationship can work. But it's a long journey to get to that point because at the beginning of each relationship we are learning from one another, we are kind of getting to know each other. And then we start growing slowly. And it's a beautiful journey. <laughs> but um, as we start getting to know each other, we also start to become less conscious in a relationship. Because at the beginning when there's, you know, that, uh, that kind of um, chemical love happening, butterflies in the stomach and so on, we are really conscious because love is pure awareness, pure consciousness and we are experiencing that, that chemistry of that pure love. So we are present in the relationship, we are paying attention, we are uh, authentic, we are fully there. But longer we are together, more we are coming out of love into our unconscious self, unconscious patterns. And that's where people start to show their, we say, true selves. People start to show their true selves in relationships, but they're not showing their true selves. They're actually showing their unconscious selves, their programmed selves. That's where the work actually starts in a relationship. That's where people notice, oh, I'm an, <laughs> like, I'm always a victim of their unconscious behaviors and that's where people quit a relationship but that's actually where we start building a relationship it's not hard to to be authentic when you're in love but when you get back into your automatic patterns and you're still in a relationship that's where you start working on it that's where you notice, well, I have some work to do. I need to be aware. I need to train myself to stay aware, 
to stay true to myself so I can be true to my partner. And of course then people find out, well, I'm passionate about that inner work, but my partner is not, so let's see what can we do. And that's something you need to work on. You need to communicate it out. <laughs> Speak it out and have this honest converse conversations. If we don't have this honest conversations, we'll not come far. So it's a path of each individual to to understand and know what's your part of it. But make sure that your energy is in balance. Make sure that you're doing your best to take care of both aspects of yourself. Because that's where you will start attracting people who are on the same level. Not all people, because also people who are not on that level will come into your life so we can teach them. But most important people, like people who may become your partners, or your business partners, or maybe your friends, your co-workers, that will appear in your life, will be more on that level as you are. So, see in your life what are you missing the most? What are your greatest weaknesses? Is it hard for you to say no, work on that? It's a coping mechanism for most people, that when they feel kind of unpleasant, kind of in discomfort for empaths, they become much more kinder and they can't control their kindness. They're, they become really, really compassionate and they can't control their compassion. They become really um, kind of fake positive and they can't control that. So if that is your weakness, you just need to train yourself to be more aware when this coping mechanism turns on. And you will notice, every time it turns on, you can catch yourself. Okay, right now I'm becoming <laughs> overflown by compassion and kindness. And I'm not saying it's bad, those are truly beautiful energies, but if we notice that we are not in, in control of that, that we are becoming inauthentic because there's some discomfort present in us right now, it means that we need to truly become aware in that moment. And we try to stay a bit more real, a bit more as we truly are, like a bit more authentic, a bit more grounded. And more we are practicing it, better we become at it. And suddenly we will overcome that coping mechanism and we will become authentic. It's a long, journey. But every time we do it, we become a bit better at it. So don't be afraid of that. It's how you've been designed by nature and you're teaching yourself right now to find all those aspects of nature that are allowing you to be your greatest self once again. So my friends, I hope this can be helpful. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. Have a beautiful day. Until next time, one love.